so I was able to solve. I gotta get out of the sunlight so you guys can have some better angles. I was able to okay put it in neutral. It has like the dial, and when the car's off, the dial goes into the car, so you can't ch change it. Uh, whatever. Anyways, for security purposes, of course. But today, back. Let's go talk about back, everybody. Um, now you may be thinking to yourself, oh, okay. Let's just get into this here. Um, I was able to solve the issue with, you know what? <laughs> I, this is gonna. I need a more permanent place for this. There we go. Um, I, I tried solving the elongated entries, or I guess you could say car talks. I know they've been kind of longer recently, like my hair is right now, but I got my hair cut. Uh, Thursday, I get my haircut every Friday, so four times, or I guess four, not necessarily four times a month, sometimes it could be five times a month, certain weeks have five Fridays in them, certain months, but I get my haircut once a week, every Friday, um, I'm always like to be fresh, so right now you might think, oh, you don't need a haircut, looks like you just got one, but this is a little bit, uh, a little bit too long for me, but, uh, I'm going to PF today to train back, so we're only like, like less than 10 minutes from the gym, not even 10, so it's 7.09 right now. I'll up at you when we get there, but today's back. So I am going to do, I got about 7,200 steps right now. Um, so I got about 2,800 more. I got, got to get 10,000 steps a day. Feeling super lean, feeling really tight. Like I know I'm just feeling really good right now. Um, I'm, I'm super excited for this first week's weigh-in because I'm going to have like zero cheating at all. Like on last year's cut, so I, I did a 10-week program last year. Uh, lost 30 pounds or 33 pounds or whatever um, from 248 down to 215, so 33 pounds. Um, and I was having like Wendy's spicy chicken nuggets with ranch. I would have that. Like I would <laughs> hold on a sec. I, I would have like a rotation. When I would get hungry at night, I would either order a six piece of the spicy Wendy's nuggets on a cut right, with ranch, and I would just bury that shit alive, no soda or anything, or I would get a Dave's single, no onions, add mayonnaise, and I'd have that probably two or three nights a week throughout, like, the first half of the cut, which is insane that I had such crazy results, but I was still eating in a calorie deficit, but this time, this cut, so bulked, and then cut last summer, all the way up, well, August, September, October, November, and then maintained in December, January, and then a bulk from February till now, six, seven months, or six, you know, February, March, yeah, six months, seven months. Um, and that'll be my, that'll be my last big bulk ever, like my whole life, where I get the 250 dirty, right? So um, my diet coach said that, whatever. But um, this cut, I'm gonna take a little more, uh, a different approach, and uh, the, probably the better approach, to be honest. And um, I'm just not gonna go that route at all. I'm not gonna do the whole fucking, I can fit this in my macro, so let me just do it, I'm gonna do it a little bit, a little bit better, I'm not gonna do fast food, I'm um, not gonna do any of that kind of shit, like today, my wife wanted to get a cheeseburger, and, um, she's cutting too, keep in mind, and I said, no, shit. what about no fries, no drink, just a cheeseburger, I'm like, no, I can't, like, I want to go to Wendy's and get two Dave's Doubles, no onions, extra mayo, a Baconator, a large fry, and an extra large Dr. Pepper, and crush it all with more ranch than one human should have. But I'm not going to. It ha you have to have that discipline. Um, so, yeah, I've been feeling super good, super lean, just feeling, like, really tight, like nothing to really hang over, like just feeling um, not, like, bouncy. You're like, I don't know. I'm just I'm excited for this week's weigh-in. Uh, I'm going to have no cheat days. Like, maybe a day or two where I go – 30 or 40 calories over because I had a little extra broccoli that I didn't count in my carbs or whatever, but we're going to be locked in, um, and we're just going to see what happens, so, man, that sun's been annoying me this whole time, let me move that there, oh, it's like, it's a little peak, like, where the, the visor still doesn't quite get it, anyways, um, so yeah, we're going to the gym now, today's back, pretty cool, um, so the reason I mentioned the steps a little bit ago, um, I'm going to do about 10 to 15 minutes of cardio before I actually start back. Um, not enough to get necessarily sweaty because I don't want to like be all sweaty in a gray t-shirt before I even start to lift. Who cares? Ignore it. Pretend I just didn't say that. Um, I'm not going to remember to go and cut it out, so just pretend I didn't say that. Um, 
but so I'm going to do probably 10 or 15 minutes, enough to get about 9,500 steps. So I'll do about 2,000 steps or so, um, and then I'll, I'll go and start to lift, which is why I'm drinking this on the way to the gym, because I got about a 10-minute drive there, not even. So it's been four minutes, and I'm about to pull in. So um, it's like a six, or, it's probably like a six-minute drive total. Um, but, you know, oh, wow, you got an Acura. Cool, dude. Um, so I'll drink this, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to finish pretty much all of it before I walk in. I might have a little bit left to finish. Walk for 10 minutes, then go and do my stretching and warming up. So by the time I go to my first working set of back, which will probably be, I don't know, guys. So I love, so I'm, I I typically just do to like the movement pattern and the way that I'm hitting the back. So really when it comes to back, you can hit it horizontally or vertically, horizontal rows and pulling movements. Of course, it could be at a slight angle, a little bit down coming up, but horizontal plane, right? You're pulling towards your body, um, towards your chest rather. Um, from a, a horizontal plane, um, you're you're, you're going to be hitting pre- pre- or dominantly like your back, your rhomboids, your lats, um, and then of course, th- there's different ways to hit your back. Now, if you only did rowing forever, you'd build a pretty good back. If you only did pull downs forever, you'd also probably build a pretty good back. But the key here, I don't know what's I don't know what's like reflecting into my eyes so much could it be this let me oh yeah it was that you guys see how literally that you guys see how i'm manipulating the sun right now as i'm turning my rearview mirror i'm manipulating the sun so i'm manipulating it in my not in my favor now something as simple as that okay so let's keep it out of my eyes there we go so it wasn't the visor the whole time it was the fucking rearview mirror oh i was in their fucking lane he look how he didn't care um, and my windows are tinted. Now I got my front windshield tinted again, so it's 30%, so super dark. So nobody can see me. Haha, <laughs> great. Um, <laughs> whatever. Oh, great. I should have left the visor. But anyways, uh, let's get on topic here. Um, I'm pulling into the gym. So 7.09, so 6 minutes it takes to get to the gym. Pretty cool. But yeah, so horizontal, you're going to hit... Oh, it's so what the point I was making is. Pulling towards your body or pulling vertically or horizontally, low rows, cable rows, or pull downs and, and, you know, cable flies, like, you know, uh, straight arm pull downs, you're hitting your back and your lats. Now, albeit, yeah, you're going to hit it in different angles and different ways and, you know, by certain, you know, different movement patterns are going to hit the back in different ways. So you're going to get like that thicker look, more of like a, a, a wider body, like from chest to back, like not like shoulders are going to get wider, but your chest to back will get thicker, right? Doing more rowing because you're building more width or sorry, more like thickness in the back. Whereas doing pull downs, you're going to build the lats, you know, you're working on kind of the, the outer part of your lat, not necessarily, this is why it's hard to explain without, without being parked. So hold on a sec. I'm about to park right here. Uh, Make sure nobody's over there. So I don't see me throwing my arms around like an asshole. Great, someone's over there. Now we're going to back it up. We're going to back it way the hell up. You guys have no idea how fucking weird this probably looks to somebody out on the outside. Um, perfect spot right here. Great. Awesome. So, <clears throat> talking about back. So, horizontally, what I'm saying is, so you have like a bar, right? You're pulling the bar towards yourself. Or you have a cable row. You're having the V-handle. You're pulling towards yourself. Or you're doing one arm at a time, pulling towards yourself. Or maybe you have a cable roll where you're kind of, or you're a barbell where you're kind of pulling lower like this, but you're still pulling towards your stomach area, right? Your chest. You you have maybe a unilateral machine. You're pulling towards yourself. Those are all horizontal, right? In the horizontal plane, I meaning you put your arms out in front of you. Anything you're pulling towards this way, you're gonna hit your back. But it's gonna be a lot of like rhomboids, um, a lot of traps, rig outs, because you're pulling in, in more of a. You're, that's just the, the angle that you're kind of pulling those muscles towards. Whereas a vertical pull down or vertical movement is where you're pulling from above you down below. So again, you're going to still hit your bicep, but always be the secondary muscle group and pulling, but you're going to be hitting more this part of your back here, right? So more of the tie in to your hip. So you're going to get, you're still working the lats in their entirety. You can't isolate certain, you can't not work a part of your lat. You can put emphasis on another part. So like if I'm doing incline, I'm not all of a sudden taking the, my middle and, uh, lower pec out of the equation they're still being used but i'm emphasizing the top portion right so you can't if i'm doing 
a, a forearm curl like this, I'm not taking my biceps out of it, right? So you're just emphasizing one muscle over the other. So what the whole point is I'm saying is you want an equal mix of the two as always. Um, but I tend to see that when I start with a horizontal, three or four heavy sets of horizontal, and I really get my lats engaged, when I go into the vertical, meaning the, the, the lat pull down, you know, any sort of pull down motion, I feel my lats engage way better for some reason. Now today I might, I, I might want to test that theory and start off with pull downs first and then go into rows and see if I have that same kind of correlation. And it could basically debunk what I'm saying. And it could just be warming up the lats regardless of whether it's horizontal or vertical will make it more, uh, feel it better and more engaged and feel like you can get more of a squeeze on the other opposite side. So what I'm saying is maybe horizontal helps me feel more for vertical, but if vertical makes me feel more for be- for horizontal, then maybe just simply warming up the lats at all is makes whatever set comes afterwards, uh, you feel the lats more engaging. But that kind of comes from just a pre-exhausting. So when you pre-exhaust a muscle group, if you go, if I go and do six sets of leg extensions to almost failure, and then I try and go do squats, I'm going to feel my quads immediately burning like shit because I just pre-exhausted them, kind of got them a little bit engaged, so on and so forth. Um, so you guys kind of get what I'm saying. So today back, uh, referencing yesterday's lift chest, guys, my shoulder feels amazing. I don't have like any shoulder pain at all. I can still feel a little impingement, um, update on the doctor, my orthopedic doctor. I'm seeing them in Avon, uh, which is in Ohio. Not that you guys know where that is, I guess, unless you live in the area, but, um, I'm seeing them this Monday. So five or six days from now. So today's Tuesday. So I could have saw them Thursday, but I needed to get my x-rays from the place I went to back in January or February, whatever, for that bullshit I went to. Um, so I'm going to go to the orthopedic doctor Monday at 8.15 or something like that, 8 a.m. or somewhere around there, first thing in the morning. Um, so we'll kind of see what's going on in here. Um, so when I'm doing this, I'm super sore, so it's kind of hard to tell. I don't feel any pain at all. My shoulder feels great. Like, no pain at all. Felt great. Like, the best has felt in a long time. So kind of ironic, right after I hit a chest day. Um, but chest is so fucking sore. I went super heavy, threw on the hundreds, incline, hammer strength, cable flies. Like yesterday was a great chest day. Took off three or four weeks of chest or three or four cycles of chest. So 16 days total. Because guys, remember, I do chest, back, arms, legs. So I took off four chest days. So basically 16 days total. Um, yesterday was great, but still going to orthopedic to get this taken care of. But today for back, um, I'm not sure. I'm telling myself like it would sound good on camera to say, you know what, let me start with some pull downs and test to see if the method works the other way around. But I just love starting with low row. I don't know what it is. It doesn't really fucking matter, honestly, what I start with. As long as at the end of the workout, I've done a pretty even mix of rows, pull downs, and then one or two various, you know, accessory movements to just fucking, you know, uh, I'm not even sure what you would say. Decimate would be a, an adjective. Mm. Does it really matter what word I use? When I walk out of that gym, people are going to see knobs on my back through my shirt and be like, yeah, he got a back pump. But anyways, uh, for those of you guys who want, want to take this seriously, an even mix of rows and pull downs, so maybe three or four or five sets of rows, you know, three, four or five sets of pull downs, um, and then maybe a couple sets of some accessory work and you'll be good. Honestly, I'll probably go do three sets of rows. Pretty, pretty heavy, but still, uh, ha- you know, light enough that I can get a good squeeze. But honestly, I can, I can do the whole stack at most gyms. So I'll use the whole stack here. Um, and I'll probably do three sets. Oh, whatever. I'm not going to say what weight I'll use. I'm going to do three sets, eight to 10, eight to 12, you know, however many I can until I'm just burnt to shit. Um, squeezing all the way at the top. Um, I'm going to hold it for a second, really focus on it. I'm going to do, no, that's what I'm going to do, pause reps today. So my quads are cooked right now. My quads are cooked. Um, my, my legs in there, my quads and hamstrings are just fucked, but my quads, if you guys remember a couple leg days ago, or my, not a couple of days, my last leg day, I got to make sure I'm drinking this. Um, I'll end this here in a second. Um, what the fuck is cans all dented? There we go. Anyways, last leg day. Nothing like particularly crazy I did that I normally wouldn't do besides that I did pause, I did front squats, which is an abnormal. I did pause reps. I don't mean like down and then up, down 
and then up. I mean, like, down, one, two, three, and then back up. I did, like, two or three second pauses at the bottom. So I'm going to try to do pause reps here. So we got to think. On a squat, at the very bottom of the squat is when the, you're in the, the most stretched position, but not necessarily the most tension is on the quads. About 25% of the way up, when you're not quite parallel, just below parallel, uh, just below 90 degrees is when the most tension is on the quads. we got to think about this from an engineering perspective um, and like the where the weight is loaded, right? Where the weight is loaded, you have to think about a vertical plane. When your quads are in that most vertical sense, but not like standing up, when they're replicating that basically as a mirror, if you think about it like that, a little bit below 90 degrees parallel, not quite 90 degrees, right in that like, you know, if you're squatting down, like not quite like right here, but like in this like general area, if that makes sense. A lot of tension on the quad. So we got to think, how would we do that for back? So the most stretched position would be here, but then there's no tension on my back at all. I'm just completely stretched. So we'll see what I'm going to do in there. I'm not sure quite yet, but a couple sets of rows, a couple sets of pull downs, uh, some couple sets, maybe a set or two of face pulls. And then uh, maybe one, or, I don't know, another various movement. We'll fucking talk about it when I get back in the car. Whoa! I didn't forget to hit the record button for once. I shouldn't even say that I, I, I didn't forget. Typically, when I get back in the car after a freaking back day like that, uh, the last thing I feel like doing is like sitting here and setting up the camera. Nothing better than having, I'm not even going to bias Stanley in this, in this, uh, analogy. I'm just going to say nothing better than having 40 ounces of water on deck all times. Um, that's my third one for today. So, I mean, that's why I like the Stanleys. I mean, I guess any sort of, uh, you guys are kind of far over there. Let me see if I can just turn here. I'll, I'll jerk you guys back over. Don't get any bright ideas either. There we go. Back to normal status. Uh, there we go. Three lights on. That's what I'm to do. I got the whole sunroof open. Um, it looks deceptively bright. Like, you guys can see the sunset back. Like, it's like, why is it so dark out? But it's just because, you know, the, the aspect ratio, the night mode, all those things on the iPhone camera really brighten up the background. Even though, yes, there is a horizon or a sunset, if you will. Um, it is not nearly as bright as the background is sort of giving. It's sort of it's giving brightness, right? But anyways, back was awesome. So what did I do? I mean, I consistently, I will say this. You can talk shit about all different gyms, the any times, the Planet Fitness, and I'm on that same kind of bandwagon. You know, I'm not really like if I had to pick between UXL and Planet Fitness, UXL is getting my my vote ten times out of ten. It's not even a question, right? But uh, in the case of, like, gym scarcity, right, so i got to put you guys back over here. In, in, the, in, the, in the context of gym scarcity, um, you know, I don't always have that, that, uh, that, what's the word I'm thinking of? I don't always have that luxury to, uh, not even a luxury, I don't think driving 45 minutes to that gym. Now, it is what it is. I got a couple of gyms local here. I, but the point I'm trying to make is I consistently have had good back days at Planet Fitness. I'm even thinking back, like getting flashbacks right now to last cut. I mean, God, it's so beautiful out right now. This is insane. I think God's watching over me right now. Um, but it, it's insane how beautiful it is out or whatever. It's more off topic there. Um, I, I, I think back to last cut with those flashbacks, like because they have such good machines, like back is one of the real only, and I guess you could say arms, but back and arms are really the only two muscle groups that you can train like exclusively machines and like have a badass over the top, like this is insane workout, pushing yourself hard, like consistently. The only thing like that you could do, you know, for back that's not a machine would be like really just, if you want to call it deadlifts for back, again, in a bodybuilding context, I wouldn't really say I'm going deadlift as my number one back movement. I think it's good for explosive strength. It's good for, it's good for explosive power building, you know, it's good for building strength, I guess in a deadlift, but deadlift strength doesn't really correlate to anything else. You know, having a strong deadlift doesn't, you know, you're, 
you're not pulling with your arms. You're really you're holding onto it with your arms fully extended, and you're standing up. It's really like a, a, a you know a, a posterior chain leg movement. You know, people can deadlift a lot of weight and have good endurance for deadlifts. Can deadlift, you know a lot higher weight for high reps. Usually have pretty good uh, you know legs. Um, now, don't get me wrong. Of course, when you're deadlifting, you can you're getting a lot of trap engagement and rhomboids and lat activation and stuff like that. But for the most part, right, deadlifts aren't really you're not hitting lat. You're not. It's not the best lat movement, right? You're just. I look at like the the power, the exertion to hypertrophy ratio, in a sense of like, if I do three sets of pull ups, I'm gonna get so much more back growth, stimulation, and development than three sets of deadlifts. Just you're gonna look way better. Now, again, it depends on what your goal is. If your goal is just to have a strong deadlift because you want to be a power lifter and you're trying to hit the big three, bench, deadlift, and squat, then yeah, go fucking deadlift your ass off. But if you're trying to have kind of a well-rounded, have like a power bodybuilding style of training, which is like you're focusing on, you know, maybe the first movement or so of your workouts is really strength-based, the heavier press, which is how I like to train. So for back, I'm starting off with heavy rows, whether that be a cable row or a barbell row or a pull-down. And then um, I'll go into more accessory work after to get the hypertrophy and build and sculpt the body. So anyways, um, Planet Fitness in a roundabout way is great for back training. And and, and it's going to be really specific here. It's good for arm training, but I wish the dumbbells were different. You, you have the dumbbells up to the 70s, I think. So they're not, not really good for chest at all because if you're throwing around the hundreds and above, you know, 70s are, are good for some stimulation. It's to really burn it out, but, you know. If the, if the heaviest the gym goes is 70s, you know, you I've already outgrown that, you know, years ago. So, um, but in a roundabout sense, still good. You know, you can use a Smith machine. If, Incline Smith is actually really good. I love Incline Smith. Um, so started off with pull downs. Like I, I said, I was going to switch it up. I did start off with pull downs. Uh, I think I did three or four sets of pull downs with the, with the straight bar, um, use my straps. Then I did uh, cable rows. So with another uh, straight bar apparatus thing. Um, varying the, the width. So sometimes I'll do more just neutral. So kind of just right in front of me, sometimes I'll go a little bit wider. Um, I don't really go narrower because I think I put my shoulders when I have to kind of round in like this, I'm exaggerating the movement just to kind of show you guys what I mean. But when I'm like this, this is like the best stimulation, right? I go a little bit wider, put a little bit of strain in your shoulders. Cause you're kind of going beyond the point of parallel. So that you have to think of the pivot point in the engineering context is going to be the shoulders. So when you kind of do neutral and you kind of almost rotate your bicep to face the sky you can kind of pull your arm along your side and get that rubbing sound that's how you kind of really squeeze it in um or you can get the cable and go out and then squeeze back that kind of stuff so um did pull downs three or four sets cable rows three or four sets um then i did face pulls so did face pulls earlier on than typical two or three sets just felt so good there because the machines of planet fitness are just you know they're always in pristine condition the weight ratio was actually what it is it's not all jaggered and then the cables aren't like sticking at all um the second that a cable sticks at planet fitness it's fixed um then so did face poles the rope um just and i focus on just pulling high and just squeezing the shit on my rear delts no shoulder pain at all then went over to like a a, a hybrid pull down and row which is where i go to a, a a machine you know cable machine where i'm gonna do my cable workouts and um you know i get two of the longer so the ropes but just a single handed ropes basically. So it works just one handle and then the rope attachments, like not like just right here for tricep push downs, but it's about this long in the rope attachment. Um, so I get two of those hook it on the same hook. So they kind of both move independently like that. Um, and then I sit all, I sit on the ground. I don't put the machine at the top cause I don't want to get just a pull down or at the bottom. I don't want to just get a row. I put it about head height or so. So when I'm sitting down, when I'm in the stretch position, I, you know, I'll take a few steps back from the machine, put it to the stack, sit down, so when I'm in the stretch position, leaning towards the machine, I'm like stretching like a pull, like a, a pull down basically. And then as I'm pulling back, I'm leaning back and I'm almost finishing off with a row. So I'm getting a very unique kind of range of motion on the stretch and the squeeze. No other machine can really do that for you. Um, and then using the cables, you have tension throughout the whole range of the motion, not just on the top or the bottom. Because you got to think when you're doing bent over barbell rows, when your arms are extended, the weight's just hanging there. You're just stretching out the muscle. And when it's up here, it's peak, peak tension, virtually no tension. So with the cable, you get tension the whole way through the movement. Um, and then, so I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, finish off. Oh, did that for two or three sets. And then I finish off with uh, two sets of straight arm pull downs. Where your arm's straight. It's kind of like this same setup as if you're going to do tricep extensions. 
But instead of, you know, bending your arm like this, you're keeping your arm straight and you're pulling down to like your hip area and you're focusing on, on stretching and, and tearing up the lat. So I ended up doing pull downs, rows, face pulls, the hybrid and those. So I did five work, five movements today, which is a lot more than I typically ever do. Um, so probably four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, probably 12 working sets, which for back, a little more complex. It's not just your lats you're training. It's your lats, your rhomboids, your traps, rear delts. 12 sets is, is, is about right. So uh, that was back. Kept this one pretty short and simple. And uh, yeah, today's uh, Tuesday. Cut's going great. Our official wedding will be Saturday. See you guys in the next one.